Hello, welcome everyone. So I think we can start right now. Uh, so this is the second deep dive of the Cree team. And uh, we are going to talk about the diffs and commenting on diffs. Uh, the first one with, was with Tiago. It was great. And we have the, the links on the, on the issue on the Cree team. So let's get started. So today we are going to, to have a look at uh, uh, what exactly a Git diff is uh, in the level of Git itself. Just a brief overview. Uh, where do we present uh, diffs on GitLab itself? Uh, a quick demo introduction. An overview of uh, how it's stored, how do we fetch and we present that both on GitLab and GitLab itself. So we are going to have a look on the standard comparison view, the merge request, diffs on merge request, and these four comments uh, on merge, merge request or commits itself. So a little bit uh, what we are going to do today, uh, we are going to, to have a look on the demo workflows, the tables that we use to store the diffs, the caching layers, uh, and a brief uh, code dive. So feel free to, to ask any question anytime. Uh, there, there's no, no issue to, to interrupt me. But we are, we are going to have a, a question, uh, Q&A in the end. So basically, uh, what, what exactly git, it, git diff is? So git diff is a, a, a git function that takes two data sets and outputs the difference between those. So uh, we can pass uh, commits, branches, files. And it's interesting because uh, this, this structure shows that we have a commit and uh, it points to a tree. So let's say uh, we have a readme that points to a blob and we have a lib, lib folder that points to another tree. So that's basically how the diff uh, are, is structured, structured the, the, the objects on Git. So we can use these, these uh, shards on Git diff itself. So it's interesting because it's a very powerful function and tool. And we, are, uh, we have most of the, the functionalities, but we don't have everything. So it's interesting to keep in mind that we use the most famous part of the Git diff on, on GitLab itself by the UI and uh, wrapping uh, the, the clients, but we don't have everything. So on the left, uh, basically what the Git diff uh, is on the terminal, a simple uh, difference between files. Uh, in this case, we show the header here, uh, the hunks that we can call uh, Git diff hunks that represent uh, the headers. And on the right side, how, how we present that on GitLab UI. So we can see that it's a little bit improved. So let's have a quick demo here. I'll quickly show. So this is the, the repo compare. Uh, um, I'm not seeing the chat right now, so let me just check if there's any. Okay, there's nothing. So uh, we have the hippo compare uh, menu here. So we can basically we, what we can do here is uh, selecting the source branch or a revision, a commit itself, and the target branch. Click compare and see basically what exactly Git diff does. Uh, we compare, but uh, it's interesting to think that here we are not fetching the database at all. So uh, we don't have anything persisted here. We can't leave comments. Uh, we don't have a merge request, obviously. Uh, we have just a few files being, uh, being showed, the difference between those. Uh, we can actually view uh, the blobs of the files here, so it's also nice. And we show that a button here that uh, we already have the merge request uh, for this difference. So we check that we have the source and target range and merge request already created for this. So here's the, the merge request UI, as probably you already know. Uh, we have the changes here. That's mostly the same thing of the comparison, but here we have a nice functionality of leaving comments anywhere. Uh, anywhere exactly because we can actually unfold these lines now here. It's a new feature and uh, we can leave comments here as well. 
And any comment, a comment that we leave here, we just track those here as well. So uh, we also have this here. So if you think about uh, this, this part of the code base, it's just uh, a, a little bit of context, not the whole div file as uh, we present here. So it's, we are going to, to see a little bit of how, how it's happening uh, behind the scenes. So let's go back here. All right, so let's start with the, let me move this here, okay. Uh, so let's start with the workflow of the standard comparison uh, view divs. Uh, compared to the other workflows, it's a little bit simpler because we don't persist anything. We don't actually need to persist right now. So fetching, uh, we just submit a request to Gitly. There's a, an RPC that we use to, to, to fetch uh, diffs that's common, uh, actually use it almost everywhere. That's the commit diff RPC. You, you, we are going to, to take a look at this on the end. And we send the limits and, and the reference that we are going to diff. Uh, it's interesting to think about limiting because uh, we don't, we can't uh, just fetch everything because we can't handle everything possible. So imagine that we take the first revision of GitLab in the last revision of GitLab, let's say the master, we are going to have a huge amount of the files. So we need to, to limit this somehow. So it's nice because before we are, we are uh, limiting on the GitLab C code base itself. And we started moving these uh, limitations to Gitly. So that's the source. So it's, it's interesting to think that we are limiting the D from the source itself. We are not fetching then putting on memory and limiting on GitLab CE. So it's, it's better to, to have a service that already does this and it's go length, so it's faster. And for the presentation part, uh, we, on the GitLab C side, we fetch those, those diff files as a string. Uh, if you think about this, is the diff is basically a string. And we put this on the diff file in the high level overview and we parse this string and the output of this is the diff line object. Uh, we are going to have a quick look what exactly the diff line ob object is. And uh, something to have in mind that we are not loading async uh, on the comparison view. We are just loading everything at once, a plain, object, a plain request, uh, HTML request, just once. That's because we, uh, we are actually planning to, to move this forward. Uh, I think we have an issue for this, I'll just link uh, when I have it. But we are thinking, probably thinking on uh, loading those diffs async. So that's something that we already have for the merge request diffs. So the merge request diffs, let's separate this on three parts, like storage, fetching, and presentation, because we have storage for now. Um, so there are two main tables that we have to, to have in mind when working with merge request diffs. Those are the merge request diffs and the merge request diff files. So in a high level idea, the merge request diffs is the, basically the version. So each push that we send to a merge request, we create a new merge request diff. And this merge request diff points to merge request diff files. So if you think about it, every version will create, recreate all the merge request diff files. So that's interesting at the same time that we have everything stored uh, and we have the, the tracking of everything on the database and we don't have to go to Gitly to fetch this. There's a downside because we, we just bloat a little bit the, the database for, for doing this and we are planning to, to move this, this, this to, to outside. So using object storage, for instance, we have an issue for this. So based on what I said before, I think there's a question. All right, Nick, just link it to you. We have the link here as well, so thanks. Uh, oops. So uh, basically the workflow is when a push is received uh, on the source branch, we create the, the merge request version that I already said, and we use this class to, to basically create the merge request diffs and clear the cache, the highlighting cache. I will talk a little bit about why the cache, the, the highlighting, but we erase the cache here. Uh, just a quick overview because we use Hooch, uh, a Hooch gen. 
So imagine that the, the input is the, the diff, the plain diff, and the output is the HTML that we need to render. So if you think that on the go, we need to do this every time a, word, uh, uh, a request comes in, imagine that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really heavy process. And we started doing this for plain merge requests, uh, diffs, and after this, for the, the comments, diffs itself, but we are going in detail later on. So as I said, we started uh, thinking about the, the size of the tables that, that, that are going way too high. And Nick's already working on, a, on this issue that, that's going to store the object storage and probably we are going to have external references in the database, I still don't know, but let's, let's see the, the merge request after. Um, yeah, so the, the fetching workflow, basically, instead of going to Gitly itself, we go to the database. We are going to have a quick look on the, the code dive after this, but there's a class interesting to have a look. And we refresh the cache. So the cache is written uh, when, we, when we load the, the diffs itself, because we, we erase the cache after seven days. So that's the, the, the expiration. So when you, we first load, we just rewrite the, the cache as well. Uh, part of the process also fetches the div stats. And that's, that part is interesting, just a second. Now, this part is interesting because we, we use it to parse the, the actual string to get the additions and deletions and the file path we already know. But we had to parse the, the string. As you may think, uh, this is a little bit boring because we have to load this on the, the memory and parse everything that's CPU bound, so it's not that good. So we left this job for a RPC that we just request. And uh, under the hood, we use the diff null stat, the, the flag. So it does the job for us. It just returns the additions and deletions. So it's, it's nice. And there's another point that uh, I showed that we can uh, expand the diff and leave a comment. So we use the GitLab diff lines on folder to like inject. Because if you think about what a, the diff file is, is basically a small part of the file. So we, if we expand this on the UI, we are requesting this for, for blobs. So just merging blob lines. And uh, we have to remerge this when we're handling. So, so the idea here is that if someone leaves the comment outside an expanded part, we have to merge this on the fly to, to have these lines from the, the blob itself. So the diff gets bigger because we are merging from the blob lines. So that's a kind of a hacky way, but it's the, um, basically the, the only way to, to do that. So the, the presentation workflow, uh, unlike the, the standard comparison view, we load those as async uh, and we use the defile entity and uh, basically JSON. And if you think about uh, the size that the, the diffs can get, uh, we started seeing that uh, a few diffs were getting way too big. So the JSON, actual JSON, after processing everything and trying to load, we started seeing a few diffs that have eight megabytes. So more than that sometimes. So uh, we, we are thinking about strategies. So at first, the, the, easiest, one, the easiest one would be just checking and making sure that we are using everything on the front end uh, being uh, uh, serialized. Because sometimes we reuse a few serializers and sometimes we get more things that, than we actually need. So that CPU being wasted, and that's also, uh, we had to, to actually download the, the whole JSON at the end. So but it's not good. We need to, to be aware that we are actually using everything. And the second part that's also interesting, that that's an issue being linked here, that we are discussing in a smarter way to, to handle the, the diffs. Uh, today, we, we first, uh, on the first load, we show the merge request widget, uh, and we just to start loading the diffs. So it takes some time, depending on the time, on the, the size of the diffs, the, the diffs itself. So we started thinking, okay, so we can load at least the first part of the diff, at least 
two or three div files and sequentially batching, batching the request for the next ones. So when the, 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 the user first loads the, the, the page, he can see at least something. So it, it, it will probably lead to, to a better UX. So there's, there's some interesting uh, discussion there if someone wants to take a look. So the caching layers, uh, as we already talked a little bit. Uh, so uh, uh, the idea was, was that at the time that we created this, this merge request the files table, we had the, the mission to load the, the merge request diffs after the fact that it was merged. So at the time, we, I think we didn't have the keep around graphs, so we started losing some references. So we needed some, some way to, to keep track of the, the diffs after the fact that it, it was merged. So uh, we started uh, persisting the merge request diff files. So as a side effect, we, we started seeing some performance improvement. So uh, in the ready side, uh, we, uh, as I said before, we were uh, just doing on the fly the, the processing of the, merge, the, the highlighting using Rouge. So as I said before, it's a slow test. So to make under a request. So we started caching the this part on Redis, we are going to see uh, a little bit on the on the code dive. So, I think the, the last part is the the discussions tab. Uh, if you think about uh, what we present there, it's just a small amount of the divs, and uh, we are going to to see a little bit about this. Also, uh, uh, as a storage fetching and presentation splitting. So the first part, of the most important uh, uh, columns that we have on notes. So it's the line code. Uh, the, that's basically the, the file path as a SHA. And there's a, the old line and new line. So it's basically used to link to the diff itself. When we leave a notes there, we can see that there's a link. And this link leads to the diffs, and that's the that's the the, the link itself, the, the anchor that we use. And position, regional position, and change position there that we are going to talk a little bit. Uh, and the second table is the note diff files. And uh, if if you think a little bit, we 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 could be using the merge request diff files because we already have all versions, right? We have all versions of the merge request diff files on the database. But the problem is we started deleting, of, deleting the merge request diff files after the, the merge request was merged. So just, just keep the, keeping the latest ones, the later, latest version, just to, to show the, the diffs quicker. But we started deleting to, to avoid a little bit of bloat on the database. But it, was, it wasn't enough, so we, we are working on this right now. So the main positions that we have are the, the original one, the, the position itself and the change position that we store as a serialized object that we can see down below here. So the original one, it presents the, the original state. Uh, so imagine uh, leaving a comment on the, the diff tab. So that's the object that we want change. So that points to, to the original uh, version, so let's say. So we use that on the discussion tab. If you think about that, uh, the diff is, not, is never changed on the discussion tab because that's the state that it, that it was uh, at the time that you left the, the comment. So the original position is the, the responsible for this. Position basically uh, follows the, the merge request version unless the, the line was changed, the exact line that was left, the comment was changed. And the change position tracks when the diff, the exact diff that uh, diff line that was commented was changed. So we that's the that that's because the name change position. So we store exactly the 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 point in time that we we changed this, and that's that's what we use it here to, to present this this for instance version eight of the diff. So that links to the diff itself. So we can see the difference between version. We have a, an issue for actually presenting the difference that just linking. Uh, I think Dawi has, has the link. I'll, I'll just leave the, the link 
on the the comments here. So, so, uh, uh, so basically, the storage workflow. I think that the main takeaway here is that uh, we don't persist everything. So we just need the the from the topmost position of the diff, the actual string, to the commented line. And you can ask why we need the, uh, from the top to the, 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 commented, uh, the commented line. That's because we need the header information. And the header information normally stays in the topmost position. So it just cuts the, the diff and persists this. Would be, would be possible to just cut the, the context that we need and rewrite the, the header on the, the string but with, it would be a little bit more complex, so we just cut everything that we need and persist right away and use that to parse and do the, the whole process that already works for, for parsing the, the diff and creating diff lines that I already, already explained it a little bit. So when the diff is updated, uh, a push is, is sent, we use the GitLab diff position tracer to just trace where exactly the position is to be on the next diff. So imagine that out push that's sent, we already have the comment there uh, uh, on the, the diffs tab, but we need to know where exactly the, the comment needs to be in the next, in the next uh, version. So if the line, exactly line, uh, the exact line that was commented was changed, it's updated. So it won't go to the latest version. So if we can track the, the line that just changed the position, let's say it was, it was in the line 10, and it was moving to line uh, 12, we can track with the diff position tracer that we need to present in the next version in this exact line. So that's the guy that does that. So the caching layers, uh, we have Postgres again, uh, that we just persist the diff hunt. So as we already talked, we, uh, and the, the reason why we started persisting this is that we were noticing that we are request we were requesting Gitly uh, all the time. So imagine that we have a merge request with a hundred comments. So we would need to be fetching Gitly like a hundred times sometimes, uh, depending on how many uh, revisions that we are requesting. So we started seeing that it was getting a little bit of out of control, and we just noted that we could do this. A uh, little persistence that would improve a lot the performance, and uh, the same the same problem that we have the, with the merge request the files the actual diffs of the merge request we started seeing on the discussion tabs as well. We started seeing that we were uh, processing the, the the highlighting the actual HTML, uh, uh, taking a lot of time to to process this. So we use it basically the same uh, strategy. So uh, I think we have some time for questions right now before the code dive. Ah, so the question is, could we go, uh, go away with the code, uh, the, the keep, keep around ref now that we have the merge request div files? Yeah, that's a good question actually. Yeah, we, I, I think we could uh, just reuse. We, would, we pr probably would see some performance like uh, getting worse a little bit, probably, but that's doable, that's doable. I don't think we could because if the um, merge request is merged at some point the, and the actual commits that made up the original diff somehow are not in any branch anymore and they get cleaned up, if we want to view those blobs or if we want to expand some of the hidden diff lines, we still need to have access to the underlying blob, which might get cleaned up if we don't have a keep around ref. Oh, okay. So that makes I, I think sense. so though. Uh, if I'm yeah. mistaken, I'd love to see an issue about this. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> we just keep generating more and more of these refs and they are a bit scary. Yeah. Absolutely. There, there has to be a way, and I think that the CI team was looking at this at least years ago already, uh, of, of kind of deduplicating them or, or reducing the amount of keep around drafts to the minimum set we actually need to cover all those commits, because obviously that's the goal. And there are a lot of redundant ones that we should be able to remove. Uh, I don't yeah, know that, if anyone's looking at that. Maybe we should be. I, I think I created an issue a long time ago. 
just talking about do we actually need to persist everything? Do we could we just request Gitly all the time because that's not that bad sometimes. Uh, so would be reducing the complexity just having to keep everything on the database. So that would reduce the the problems with table sizes. So I'll just link the issue that I created some time ago. It would be nice to discuss this there as well. So let's let's uh, have a quick look on the code. I have a few files here. So let's see. So the first one here is the, the merge request reload diff service. Uh, as you may think that that's it's that's used when we receive a push. So it does a few things here. Uh, it creates the merge the merge request diff uh, and create the merge request diff files as well. It clears the cache that we had because we need to keep the latest. And this uh, triggers the update of the position. So we need to know where the, the comments will be. So we just triggered the, the positions update. Uh, so this is a lower, lower level. It would be nice to actually present the, the, the Gitly part. Just, just one piece here that I, that I separated. Uh, this is the main RPC that we use to fetch the, the diffs. And it's pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, we receive the left, left commit and the right commit and receive the, the paths here as well. And if you take a look here on the args that we are actually calling uh, the git itself here. So he also here we can see that uh, if we're enforcing limits, that, that comes from, from the, C, the GitLab part, or actually the client. So the, this checks that we, if we are enforcing limits, we are actually using the limits. So we are setting everything here. So on this part here, we iterate on the, on the diff. And I think that it returns a string of diffs. That, that's the, these are the objects that, that are returned. So lots of them. Um, yeah, it checks that the the diff pad size is less than we could send so we need to to just string that so that's that's interesting a little bit of go code that we use a lot so let's go back so uh, as you've seen on on the gitly side uh, that we use the limits being sent from the, the client that's the gitlab code base itself uh, we use this, we set this here. So this, this is the class that GitLab gets diff collections, basically the class that wraps uh, the, what, what's coming from, from Gitly. So that, that, there's some logic here that we could take a look really quick, quickly. So let's say, uh, we can see that it takes uh, a look, uh, it, it sets the overflow when it overflows, like expands a, a certain position, a certain limit. I think, I think part of this is already done on, on Gitly side. So we need to delete, actually delete some code here, I think. So for instance, uh, we check, oh, actually it, it comes from Gitly. We can see overflow mark, marker here. So we just set the overflow to true. Overflow, so we just stop handling. So it takes some, some logic of uh, limiting as well. So so this is the lower level wrapper, let's say. Uh, on the right side here, uh, we have also have a, a lower level uh, object that, sh that fetches Gitly. So it, it also fetches here based on this between method. So also interesting to, to know this class. Let me just close this. Um, yeah, so that, that's interesting here. Um, let me, just a second, all right. So I've opened this because it's interesting to see how the, the diff collection works. Uh, this is the, the diff collection merge request diff. And if you take a look on the, on the subclass here, the, the, the base class, 
we always call these diffable raw diffs. So basically, what, what exactly diffable is? So diffable is uh, basically a compare uh, object that I've, I've showed it before here, uh, basically a compare method or a merge request diff. So things that we can call raw diffs, for instance. And each, each object has its uh, particular way to fetch diffs. So if you pass the, the compare, we are going to, to fetch from the, the repo itself because the raw diffs goes to the repo itself. And if you, we pass the merge request diff, and if you take a look at the implementation of the raw diff, it's, it actually goes to the database instead. So there's a nice abstraction uh, uh, on this that we have the file collection merge request diff, we have the file collection compare. So each of those super classes uh, receive this method that represents this class and knows exactly how to fetch this, these diffs. So it's a, a nice overview. So for instance, on the merge request diff, since we use the cache, uh, the diff files just use the calls cache decorate for every diff file. So the decorate itself don't request the, the Redis, it just takes what's memoized and just uh, assigns to, to highlighted diff lines. We can take a quick look here on the diff highlighted cache. Yeah. And if you take a look here, it just assigns the highlighted diff lines and the, uh, we just iterate on the content and create uh, the, the diff lines, just uh, create instances of diff lines based on what we had on the cache. So uh, we have the diff file here. Uh, the diff file does a little bit too much actually. There's a lot going on here, but let's take a look on the diff lines that we can uh, understand a little bit of the flow of rendering. Uh, we, can, we call diff lines, we use the parser on the raw diff itself, so that's the string. We pass the iterator here, raw diff each line. And uh, we can take a look here that we parse the actual string. Uh, so those lines are actually string, uh, array of strings. And here we can see that we checked the, we, we found the header there. So since we know the header is there, we know exactly which line is there. So we can create multiple lines. So that's, that's the core of rendering the, the diff lines because we serialize those lines and the front end just takes, takes everything that's already uh, there and just handles in theory. So hopefully. <laughs> Um, so that's a lower, a bit, a little bit lower level uh, wrapper of the diff. Uh, it knows a little bit more about uh, the the limitations itself. So it takes some some uh, constants here to know what's the size that we should be using as a limit. It it also knows the that we sh we should request uh, gitly the repo itself. So it has a few methods. That, that's interesting to this part of patching. So not much that uh, high level. So, so things that are more related to fetching. Mm. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, uh, it memorizes a few things like too large uh, and collapse it, for instance. So when this object is passed to diff file, uh, it's already memoized it. So let's say uh, this logic this logic's already like let's say prepared and we serialize uh, this these attributes. So the logic of knowing exactly uh, how to memoize those those attributes should be here, most part of those. So here's the line that we created uh, from the cache that I just showed it. It takes a few a few attributes here and you can take a look on the cache again uh, basically we call the image from from hash and that's that's what it's taking here so it knows how to respond to edit remove it meta and change it so it knows what exactly the the line represents so basically what an object might do should do actually 
Um, yeah, so the High Lightning Cache we already saw. Uh, so this is the, the, the entity, the serializer itself for each diff file. So it knows just how to serialize. So that's cool. Um, here I highlight the diff lines, it calls the diff file. So what it's calling here is the diff file that I just showed. Uh, hopefully we are going to remove these parallel diff lines and just uh, do this, uh, use just the, the diff lines for serializer. I think that we, ha we have a merge request to just remove the parallel lines and do these in the front end. It's good because we just remove a few other, a few extra megabytes maybe, or just, I don't know, kbytes. But uh, at least we are just uh, making it a little bit faster. But it's, it's interesting to think that the front end will be doing a little bit more actually. But yeah, let's see. So the diff node, uh, diff node is the persistence layer. Uh, we have the, uh, a few validations on the original position, the position, line code. Uh, I think that's interesting to show the main part here is that the fetching of the diff file. And if we take a look here, it's pretty straightforward. We check that we have the, the persistence, uh, the persisted node diff file that I just showed that we have a, a table there. And we just create the instance of the diff file. If you don't have the, the persistence node diff file because it's an old merge request, it's not created yet, uh, we just try to fetch this from the merge request diff files from the, the, the merge request diffs itself because we keep the latest. So sometimes, uh, sometimes you just can uh, fetch from this, from the database instead going through the least performant part that is just fetching from, from the repo itself. So as I said, we, we do the, some magic on the, the unfolding lines, the lines on folder that we can see here. Basically this, this lines on folder class, uh, the, the whole point is that it takes the position and it takes the diff file and it knows uh, which line is that exactly we need to fetch from the blobs to present this block of code that we the, the user just commented. So basically the return of this, the unfolded diff lines, are the diff lines processed with the blob lines, that the extra blob lines that we fetch it. So a little bit, just a little bit of magic, but it makes sense. <laughs> Um, this part here, okay. So the, the GitLab discussions diff file collection, the idea here is to wrap all the discussions diff. So imagine the, the discussion tab that we have on the merge request. Uh, this, this guy here just takes all the, the diff files on the, the uh, trunked, the chunked uh, diff files and knows how to load the highlighting from the, the cache. It knows how to find by the ID. So uh, it's, it's basically a wrapper of the, the discussion. The, it also calls the, the highlight cache that we can see here. And at this point, you might be asking yourself, why do we have two different classes to cache, to, to cache the same strategy, to have the same strategy of cache? So the, the actual idea here is that uh, on the discussions diff, we could just erase the cache when someone just deletes the, the comment. So it's a little bit different from the actual diff of the merge request. Here we are able to, let's say, just delete the, the cache when, when just one, one, one diff file cache, different from the, the other cache that we just write everything at once and we don't have separate keys. On this, on this cache here, we use uh, a little bit of lower level of the Redis, but we are also able to pass multiple keys and write everything at once. So for now, we are not erasing just one diff file, just writing and reading everything. We are just uh, relying on expiration time, that's seven days. But if we want to just erase, start erasing more quickly, we just could implement that really easily with this guy. So again, the lines on folder that we already talked. 
Uh, so this this is really a really big and a little bit complex class. Uh, so the idea here is taking the old refs and the new refs on the when, when the push is received, and uh, the idea is knowing where exactly the, the the comment needs to be when receiving a new push. So uh, I think the the output here is a result uh, having. Uh, I think Dowie knows a little bit better, but basically the position and if it's outdated or not. Uh, so the new position or, and if, if it's outdated or not, uh, it, it returns what we need to know to persist the position. Uh, so uh, as the last class here is basically the, the serializer for the discussion. It just knows that we need to to call truncated diff lines, to, to return the diff lines to the front end. So it's pretty straightforward. I think that's it from the code dive. Let's go back here. And I think that's the, the last question part. If someone wants to, to ask anything. Everyone's confident that if I assign them a uh, merge request diff feature next month, they'll be fine. <laughs> I, have a, I have a quick question. All right. Um, do we or will we handle image diffs? And if so, how do you feel it fitting into the current architecture? Sorry, could you, could you repeat? Um, will we ever handle image diffs, like a side by side on a merge request, like having images? Uh, what changed or something. I don't know if we currently do that. And if we don't, how do you see it fitting into the current architecture? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Actually, uh, we do have some, let me take a look here, show the position. If position. So uh, we were talking about the position itself. So what we do today is knowing the widgets and height of the, the image and knowing where exactly the comment was made by the position. So X and Y. So that's a good question actually to, to have a side by side. I'm, I'm not sure right now, but I can come up with a good, a good response for this. I'm not sure, sorry. We, we do have image diff commenting functionality. Uh, I think by default in the yeah, image diff, we have that option of, of switching between old and new and using that um, like onion paper kind of view where you, you know, can drag the line and see the images kind of turn into the other one. And we support commenting there too. And that's what Oswaldo was pointing out with those X and Y coordinates, which we use instead of new line and old line when you're commenting on a changed image. Uh, but for the most part, everything related to um, image diff commenting is implemented on the front end. Uh, only the diff nodes, when we store them, of course, they need a diff position to know what they are attached to. And in this case, that's an XY coordinate rather than an old line and diff line in file path and other stuff. File path, of course, is the case for images too, but uh, X and Y instead of old line and the new line. Yeah. So I think and from the perspective it. of, uh, oh, from the, just trying to finish that thought, from the perspective of how it fits into the architecture, uh, when you have a collection of diff files, because of course a diff is a collection of diff files, and then each diff line, if it text files, diff line will have uh, a number of diff, li diff lines. But of course, if it's an image diff file, then it won't. Uh, but the diff file implements a viewer method that returns a viewer that I think Oswaldo mentioned that as well, which in the case of text diffs will be a text diff viewer, and in the case of image diffs will be an image the viewer and this is uh, also communicated to the front end so the front end knows which diff rendering and diff comment rendering logic to branch into so yeah exactly diff viewer image uh, it doesn't implement all that much logic here because it includes client side on line six which means that it leaves the responsibility of uh, actually rendering this diff to the front end uh, and the front end will yeah. know about, uh, how to allow commenting there yeah that's right Cool. So we just return the... Thanks for diving into that. Cool. So I think that's it. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed. So see you on the next deep dive. That's soon. I, uh, we can take a look on the issue. There, there's a few scattered already. So that's cool. I think the next one's going to be on Git LFS in about a month by um, Fran.
in if no one else uh, picks a spot in between that. <laughs> so cool. that's it. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Right. Bye.